Hello and welcome to another scrapbooking process video. Over the past couple of weeks I've been scrapbooking a lot using color palettes and today I'm going to be doing another layout using, this time I'm reusing another color palette. So this is the one, see it up there in the top right hand corner. I created that palette using the Coolers app and in the process video that is linked in a card right here, I picked out this color palette using the photo above it, so the photo with the rainbow, and uh, I, I created that layout called Farewell using that photo. Here I'm just going to reuse the color palette, and I'm also going to reuse the scraps that I had picked out. So I kind of created a little bit of a kit here using my scraps, and this one piece of paper, the one full sheet that you see, is from the Sugar Rush collection from Vicki Booten. I found when I created that initial Initial layout with the rainbow that there were a few other photos from that same trip that had similar color schemes so here I'm going to pick this photo of the girls on the swings and I'm gonna hang on to the third photo there because that will also work well with these scraps that I already have picked out and so you will see that in a future layout at some point but this is number two with this color scheme and it's number four of all of the layouts that I've been doing using color schemes. So I will create a little playlist so that you can check all of those out because I'm using both the Coolers app and I'm also using the Color Cubes, uh, which I talk about in another, in another video. But for now, I'm picking out a background paper for this one and I want it to be craft. I have two different kinds of craft paper here. The basil one, as you can see, is quite a bit warmer and this other craft paper is from My Colors cardstock and I got it at scrapbook.com and I chose it because it is a little bit of a cooler craft. And I like to keep both in my stash. I like to keep a good a, a good selection of warm craft paper as well as cool craft paper. And I recently had to restock at scrapbook.com. I bought both the basil and the My Colors. So because I'm using a pretty cool color palette here with those with the blue and the gray and those greens, uh, I decided to go with the cooler cardstock with the cooler craft. And if you didn't have a selection, whatever craft you have is fine. I just like to keep both because I do a lot of scrapbooking. So I really love to use this floral paper from Vicki Booten's Sugar Crush, Sugar Rush collection. And uh, I'm really wanting to use it. And I'm only going to use two strips of it here. I adore this pattern and I wish I could use more of it. And I will probably go back and use more maybe on the next project that I do with that same kit of scraps. These are all very, very old scraps, except for this one piece of cardstock, that, this one piece of pattern paper here with the floral on it. Uh, everything else here is very, very old. And I feel like I've been doing a lot of pages that have horizontal strips of paper at the top and bottom. And I want to do that again, but I don't want all my pages to have the similar look. So I'm going to make these, uh, these strips be vertical instead of horizontal. And in, because of that, I also wanted my photo to be a, a vertical photo. And so I decided to trim off the two edges. There weren't many things in the background that were all that important. So I decided it was fine to trim it down into a vertical rectangle. It does mean keeping a good part of that negative space in the foreground, which is really just dirt, which I kept in the photo when I composed it because I thought I might do some journaling or put a title or something on it. And I'm still thinking that I might put something on that dirt. I'm going to take a couple of other strips. I'm just working with the whole idea of vertical lines here. And so I'm going to take some other strips. So that's the back side of the Vicky Booten paper. And now this is a, uh, a scrap from my stash. And this is also a scrap from my stash. This looks like Maggie Holmes to me. I don't know the brands of any of those, but the polka dot on the far side is Studio Calico. And this is a manufacturer's strip that the color scheme worked, but the pattern didn't. So I'm just going to leave it. Oh, I love that bold polka dot, which I did use in the other layout using the same kit of scraps, but uh, I'm not going to use it in this one. So I'm just grabbing each of those papers again because I'm going to take a smaller swatch of each of those same pattern papers and put them down here in my secondary cluster in the bottom left hand corner. So my main cluster of pattern papers and 
elements will be in the top right hand corner and then the secondary cluster will be down here in the bottom right left hand corner and so this will be a diagonal layout a diagonal overall design and so I like how the boldness of the pattern paper that runs the whole length, like that Vicky Booten pa pattern paper with the, with the flowers on it. I love the boldness that that offers. It's only a tiny bit, but it do does offer enough boldness and it balances out on both sides. So I like that. I'm talking here a little bit about contrast. So I do publish real time versions of my process videos over on Patreon. So if you're interested in hearing some of the details that I'm talking about, you can check those out over on Patreon. But what I'm basically saying is I'm talking about the idea of contrast and how um, I basically contrast and repetition kind of work together like I like to have differences between my my papers to create some contrast so some some high contrast and some low contrast papers there but I also want them to be repeated and I don't want them to be too much of a pattern like I didn't want to the papers the strips of paper to go green blue green blue green blue because that's too predictable I only have a small selection there so it ends up playing out very similar to green blue green blue uh, and so I just wanted to be careful that I didn't uh, do too much of that I was trying to be careful that my repetition wasn't too symmetrical now in flipping through my options for papers and things I might want to add, I noticed that the back side of one of the pieces of scrap paper that I picked out for this kit, I noticed that it had these really beautiful botanical illustrations on the back side. And so I did decide to cut one of them out. And I kind of knew when I cut one of them out that I might end up cutting multiples. And I, I kind of felt like I'm, I'm either going to cut out one or I'm going to cut out three. So I start by just roughly cutting them out and then I will add a little bit more detail and then a little bit more detail until I decide that it is as intricate as I need or want it to be. I'm trying to find a balance between the investment of time, which, you know, I don't want to spend hours and hours cutting out little fiddly things. But on the other hand, if it looks nice enough, I don't mind spending some time cutting out little fiddly things. So that's kind of what I'm trying to work out here is how long is this going to take and is it going to be worth it? You never really know until you give it a try, unless if you do a lot of fussy cutting, in which case you might be able to say, oh yeah, I can do that pretty quickly. So I know people have different feelings about fussy cutting. Some people find it really soothing and some people find it more annoying or too much of a hassle. So that's what, you know, the scrapbooking industry gives us lots of different options, right? So a die cut would work just fine here. If you didn't want to do any fussy cutting, you could go into your die cut stash and pick something out or even cut something with a digital uh, die cutter or even a manual die cutter would be fine, right? whatever you want to use. So I did decide, I dove in and decided, yeah, I'll, I'll do a couple of these. It wasn't so bad to do the one. So I knew when I started cutting out the second one that I would end up doing three. So that was the commitment there. I'm just cutting around this one. This one has a lot more open spaces, so it's a little bit easier to do and therefore it's working a little bit faster. My tips for fussy cutting are to try to hold your scissors in one spot and just kind of really gradually open and close them and move the paper around. See how my scissors are mostly staying still and it's the paper that I'm flipping around and around. You might be able to see a little bit better now that I have zoomed in. I have another tip for doing leaves. I find it easier to cut towards the tip and then again cut towards the tip. So kind of change direction so that you're, you're kind of, um, I don't know how to say it other than cutting towards the tip. <laughs> uh, yeah. I find that if I try to, cur to turn the corner at the tip as opposed to cutting two cuts that meet at a tip, if I try to turn that tip, I never make the angle correctly. So that's why I kind of cut each leaf from a different, the two angles of the leaf from two different angles. I think you might see me do it here. Oh no, there I go. I'm trying to turn, I turned the leaf corner there. That doesn't usually work out for me. 
I think on the other leaf, I'll do it the other way. This is a really beautiful dandelion at seed. I love dandelions at seed. It's one of my favorite images. I, I have a tattoo of it and everything. There. So see, I'm cutting towards the tip and then I'm cutting, I kind of am using a, a whole different cut to cut the other edge of that tip. So two different cuts instead of trying to use one cut to go around the corner. You can use one cut to go around the corner if you want and if it works for you. But I find that I often trim it wrong. I might cut the edge off of it or I go too wide or it ends up curved instead of pointy or whatever. But play around with it and see what works for you. I'm liking how these layers look together so I'm just going to use some adhesive to glue these down to one another so that I can move them around on the page as a single element. There we go. Oops, I got a little bit too much adhesive there. That manufacturer strip I am going to cut off. And here I go, I'm, I'm attaching that to the base paper, but I actually don't want to do that. So I pulled it off because I have an idea for the background on this one. And it's in order for me to do that, I'm going to have to not attach these layers quite yet. So that will go somewhere around there and I'll attach that little botanical die cut or cut out fussy cut piece. And then we have this little cluster over here, which I'm actually going to change this cluster a little bit. I do like the cluster like that, but you'll see the problem that it creates is that then once I put that flower there, you're just not seeing the flower very well. I do like how it looks there. It almost looks like it's hiding. And when you look closely at it, it does look really great with those papers behind it. But I want it to stand out a little bit more. So I played around with maybe leaving a little edge of the green paper there. And then I thought about just going with this. And then I thought, well, let's just try this. I actually wasn't sure if I was going to like this, but I thought, let's just give it a try and see how it goes. You got to take risks and try things out or else you'll never learn what you like and what you don't like. So you have to be willing to try things. I didn't like the repetition of green there. It seemed like there was too much green, but I think I'm going to go with this instead. I like the look of that botanical fussy cut piece on the green paper because it makes it a lot more visible. I stapled it in place with my tiny attacher and then I just used a little bit of glue so that the little edges wouldn't flop around because this is going to be handled a little bit before it ends up finding its way onto the page because as I said I have an idea for the background. I did the same thing here stapling this botanical on and then gluing it with a little glue pen. Now this is a chipboard set that I got from Crop and Create. It was one of the free prizes that you get just that it wasn't a prize for like everybody got it is what I'm trying to say. It was a giveaway, not a prize. So I like how that looks, but I think that the pink on there is a little bit too orangey. Like it's a little bit too coral. It's too warm of a pink. It does pick up really nicely on Annabelle's dress, but Annabelle's dress is a real cool pink and this embellishment has warm colors in it and that's causing me a little bit of a problem. I'm going to leave it out there anyways because I thought what I might do is cover up that, especially the, the coral colored butterfly. I felt like I might be able to do something creative and cover it up, so I'm going to leave that chipboard piece out just because I, I like that horizontal look how it intersects all of those vertical lines now you saw me gently with a pencil mark the edges like the outlines of the borders of where those layers will lie and now I'm just grabbing my little half size sewing machine this is a new home sewing machine from Genome or Genomi And I am going to <laughs> make some random doodles using black thread and a 
fairly long stitch. I'm just going to go around and around and around in circles until I run into a problem because the paper is big and it doesn't swing around quite so nicely. I don't want to bend the paper, so I'm kind of creating a little cone shape when I need to. Just loopy, loopy little doodles with my sewing machine. I love this sewing machine. I do have a full-size sewing machine, which I reserve for stitching on actual fabric, which I don't do very often. But uh, these, this is a dedicated paper sewing machine. So if you don't have the luxury of doing that, which many people don't, and that's it's a it, the reason I have so many things is because I was on design teams. I've been doing this for a long time, and companies send me things for free. I actually did get one of these sewing machines uh, given to me. Um, for a giveaway and then there's a big long story about how I ended up getting it and even though it was a giveaway <laughs> um, but I didn't keep it I didn't steal from anybody uh, but I did buy it in a sort of a weird way but there's a long story about that that I can tell another time uh, anyhow if you followed me long enough you might already know the story for that but what was I saying <laughs> I have ADHD and I sometimes lose track of what I'm saying, but isn't that lovely? I love how those doodles look. So I'm just checking there. And uh, yeah, so my tips, that's what I was saying. Tips for sewing on paper are this. If you have one sewing machine that you use for both paper and for, for fabric and like real sewing, what you want to do is be mindful that sewing with paper will make your needle dull and it'll dullen it very, very fast. So it's a good idea to have a separate needle that you just use for scrapbooking. Uh, it's also a good idea to um, be careful that you're not sewing through glue because it will gunk up the insides of your sewing machine. You might also find that you need your sewing machine to be serviced a little bit more regularly if you're using paper because fibers get pulled into the inner workings of your machine. It is a good idea to have your sewing machine serviced on a regular basis anyways but see what I'm doing right here there's actually adhesive under that strip of paper that was sort of holding it in place on the paper the reason I decided to sew is that that adhesive wasn't actually doing a great job once I rolled the paper up multiple times but anyhow I don't mind sewing over adhesive because this machine is specifically for this but you might not want to uh, sew over adhesive and if you don't that's okay just uh, time your project and and kind of put things together in such a way that you're gluing after you've done your sewing and I don't find that I need to change any other thing you don't have to use a special needle you don't have to use special thread uh, or any kind of special um, pressure or um, you know thread whatever those settings are with the numbers on the side. I don't have to really change those. Well, all I do is, is sew on paper. So maybe if I was going back and forth between fabric and paper, I might need to, but I haven't noticed that when I used to only have one sewing machine. So I'm not sure if I'm done, but I did run out of bobbins. So that makes me done because I hate refilling bobbins. Oh, no, I didn't run out of bobbin yet. Spoiler alert, I am going to run out of bobbin, but I will get, I just wanted to get a little bit of back and forth. This just adds a little bit of boldness and anchoring. Like I like to anchor things to my page and these straight stitches back and forth and back and forth using the back stitch button and then forward stitching. You could always just flip it around and go back and forth with straight stitching only, but anyhow, this provides a little bit of a scribbly anchoring look. And I really like the overall look of this. Now, one thing that will make these stitches look a little bit less obvious and out of place is adding some splatter to this page, and I will do that. But once I put my doodles on the background, I felt like the layers of like the main cluster of layers, I felt like it should be over a little bit more than it was, but I didn't want a gap where the craft paper would show through 
going to erase those pencil marks I made now while I still remember. Uh, so once I shift my cluster over a little bit, see there's a little strip of craft paper there. I just tore off a piece from my scraps. These are the same set of scraps that I used er to choose from this kit uh, for this layout. And I'm just adhering that little strip there and that will cover up the gap that will that would otherwise show. And that allows me to shift this ever so slightly over because I didn't want all of those back and forth stitches to be showing. I wanted it to look like it was coming out from behind the layers. I ran out of bobbin and I ran out of adhesive at almost the same time. So I did have to change my adhesive there. I used Tombow Tape Runner, Tombow Mono Tape Runner. It's my favorite. And I like it because there's a lot in it, so you don't have to change them out as often. And it's a good, it's it's forgiving in the moment, but it's also very solid once it dries. Like once you've burnished your project, it doesn't tend to come apart. So I am taking off these clusters, even though I literally just put them down because I forgot. I want to do some splatter, so let's do some splatter. Now I am going over, I changed my angle there because I'm going to use my splatter. This is my makeshift DIY splatter guard. I got tired of cleaning splatter off of my computer monitor and desk and all of the things that I store behind my desk. So uh, I made these quite some time ago. I don't always use them because they're a bit of a hassle to put up, but it's basically three pieces of large foam core board from the dollar store and I cut one in half and used packing tape to adhere the two halves to either side of one of the holes <laughs> if that makes sense if you're interested in knowing how I made this why don't you leave me a comment and I'll just show it on a video because it might be easier but you might be able to tell what it is just by looking at it right it's basically like a little foldable thing and then I have a third piece of that same foam core board that I just place on the bottom and that keeps the little arm door thingies from closing on me while I'm using it if that makes any sense. So yes where I went right now was to get somebody with stronger hand skin than I have to open the bottle of gold Heidi Swap color shine because <laughs> because uh, my skin was hurting like I couldn't open it because it was like tearing my skin <laughs> so I got somebody else to open it for me so I used black Heidi Swap color shine and I used gold Heidi Swap color shine and the tip for the color shine you probably know if you have this product but you do need to really 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 shake it uh, especially the gold because uh, those little gold flex are suspended in liquid and they do tend to settle at the bottom. They all settle. The Heidi Swap ones all settle, uh, but the gold in particular settles quite a lot. The Mr. Hueys and some of the other dye-based ones do not settle and it's only the pigment-based ones that settle. So know your product, know your spray. Some you got to shake, 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 and some you can just shake a little bit. So doesn't that look lovely? <laughs> it looks like a disaster, but it is a fun disaster and I love it. It's my disaster and I love it. So look at these. Oh, I love those colors. It's so much fun. So I wish that I had kept that little color scheme paint chip like thing. The color swatch but I don't know where it went in the process of making this oh there it is it's over on the side you can see it over on the left hand side so this is upholstery thread what I love about upholstery thread is that it holds its curvature after you take it off the spiel uh, spiel after you take it off the spool and so unlike regular thread which gets all knotted and awkward looking sometimes this stays really smooth and circular and if you really want a circular look then these are this kind of thread is really great upholstery thread it's just a thicker heavier thread it's also a lot more visible uh, and so it makes more of a bold addition than regular thread 
Regular thread is better if you want a real messy look, if you want to just kind of bunch it up and have it all different angles and stuff. With upholstery thread, you're really not going to get any angles at all. So I'm still thinking about using this chipboard piece from the Simple Stories collection, but I'm going to not. I don't know when I'm going to realize that, but at some point I'm going to realize that it's just not going to work. So I went over to my stash and I grabbed these embellishments. This is not, this. I don't remember what collection this frame is from. I think it came in a hip kit many, many, many years ago, uh, but I love that. It might be from crepe paper or something, maybe a Maggie Holmes collection, I don't know. Uh, but I do really love that frame and I'm so happy to get a chance to use it here. And then all of those other supplies over on the left side, there's chipboard and a sticker sheet and also a set of die cuts. Those are all from Paige Evans' Splendid collection. And I thought that that color scheme would match because I knew it had some of those greens and blues that are in this color palette, but I was trying to bring some pink into this page because uh, Annabelle's dress is pink and so that made sense to be the extra color to grab for this. So although my color scheme, that color palette that is now covered up with the with the things over on the left hand side, uh, that color palette was my jumping off point. I'm not married to it. Like it's okay if this page evolves in a way that doesn't stay true to that color palette. The, the, I'm using it as a tool here, so I, I don't want to be, you know, stuck to it if it's if it's going to inhibit my creativity and my my joy that I get from scrapbooking, which I I gotta say. I've been finding a lot of joy in 12 by 12 scrapbooking for the past several weeks, just loving it. Like this is my jam. Where have I been? Why haven't I been doing this all along? Nope, that doesn't work. But uh, that other piece of chipboard, that works. It, it's, you know, it's a, it's a little bit more plain. Obviously, it's thinner than the other piece of chipboard that was there, but this this one will do. And I'm going to put the third fussy cut little botanical piece right beside the first one. And when I put this chipboard down, I'm going to use the edges of my Stampin' Up! Dimensional adhesive to just fill in the space because this chipboard doesn't sit flat because of the way that the papers are all layered together. And so I need it to be, a, I need to use those dimensional adhesives on either side just to fill the space. But also, notably, this chipboard, especially American Crafts chipboard, is notoriously the only thing that consistently falls off my pages. When I go to old scrapbooks and flip through the pages, anything with American Crafts chipboard on it, the chipboard has come off and fallen to the bottom of the page protector. So I am making an effort to use some other kind of adhesive whenever I use American Crafts chipboard from now on. And so those pop dots are enough, but I also added a little bit of Tombow Mono Multi. You might have seen me do that for the part that actually hits the page. Now I need a home for my journaling. So I thought I might use this little tab it's upside down, but that's okay. I don't even mind that the, the little sentiment on it is up upside down and that's okay, I don't mind. I'm gonna trim it down a little bit there. So these are the die cuts from Paige Evans' Splendid Collection. Ooh, I like that one. I think I like that one more. It has that same color blue it's like a greeny blue and I really like it. At first I thought, oh, if I use that, I'm going to want to fussy cut all of those edges. But no, I don't want to fussy cut all those edges. That sounds awful. So <laughs> I have already done enough fussy cutting on this page. So I am going to figure out how I just cut it in a in a hand cut circle. And I'm going to figure out a way to slip this in without covering up the thread that I put in there and the little fussy cut botanical piece that I put in there. There. So I did have to take off the little piece of dimensional adhesive that was behind that botanical piece. Then I just put it back when I was done and I was able to reuse the same one. So I'm going to use my Sakura Pigma Micron fine liner here 
And my journaling says, Annabelle live in Soph, ready for our a la carte night out, posing on the swings by our room. And our room is really squished in there, but I made it work. So now I'm just having a look around at what other final touches I might want to put on. And I'm also, oh, let's make a mark that I used that piece so I don't go looking for it. And I'm thinking I might use this other piece, which I don't think I did cross off of that embellishment pack. So I'll have to go back and make sure I cross that off. Uh, I love these letter stickers. I bought them at, at the at the store that was at Crop and Create, and they are really, really cool. But I think that it's going to be too much pink. So I did buy two of these. These are from Doodlebug Design, and they're called Alphabet Soup. And I just repackaged them into my own little bags, which I do with all of my, my larger size letter stickers. Anything that's six, six by 12 goes into those bags. And I'm going to use the yellow ones, even though this is the only place that yellow shows up on the page. There's a tiny bit of yellow in the leaves, in the petals of the flowers on that uh, Vicky Booten Sugar Rush paper that goes um, up and down the two sides. And so I didn't really know what to call this. I kept thinking like sweet swing, swinging, I don't know. I didn't know what to call it. So I ended up calling it swing time. Almost like, you know, swing music, but also it kind of sounds like springtime as well, but it wasn't springtime, it was the winter. And they're sitting on a swing, of course. And there's a little heart on this font, so I just put that on there just to take up some of the space. And then I'm going to tuck this up underneath some of the layers so that it looks like it's sticking out. Ooh, I like that. Just pulled up the tab a little bit to give it a casual look. We'll also cast a little bit of a gray shadow. Now at this point, it's funny because I'm saying to my Patreons, I'm like, now am I going to make up a date for this or am I going to be accurate? And so I'm like, I just left the roller date stamp on what it was, looked up the date, it was February 3rd, and coincidentally, my roller date was already set to February 3rd, so that worked really well. I used Night of Navy Stampin' Up ink for my roller date stamp there, just, I just like that color. I was talking about those Doodlebug design letter stickers, which I adore. I had never seen them before because I really don't go shopping very often. I have such a giant stash that I don't need to shop these days. So, but if those letter stickers came in navy blue or a really dark inky blue, oh my gosh, I would buy so many packages of those. So if you know if the Doodlebug designs alphabet soup font comes in navy blue please leave me a comment and I will seek those out I'll probably seek them out anyways but let me know if you know and wow does this layout not have a patchwork quilty kind of feel to it even though it certainly isn't a patchwork design kind of like a pattern or anything it just those those patterned papers look like they could be fabrics they're so pretty I love them love 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 them so this page has a real old school feel to it to me it really feels like the way that i used to scrapbook back in the day if you've been following me for a while let me know what you think do you do you see it does it feel like an older layout to to you it feels like it to me so uh before i show the photos i just wanted to give a shout out to all these wonderful folks who were on the screen just a second ago there uh those are my patreon supporters and they make this channel happen so big thanks to them patrons get early ad free access to all of my process videos so they've already seen this one uh, they also get real real-time unedited versions of my videos as well as a monthly live stream a zoom chat behind the scenes videos of my room and my process and whatnot so thanks to them and thanks to you for watching all the way to the end of this video let me know if you have any questions or comments and until next time have a really great scrappy week